Hey, Giddy, how you doing? It's Omar. <laughs> no, we've never met. This is an open video to you. This is a video that I've been wanting to make for quite a bit of time since you announced your book, My F in Life, which I think is a pretty, I guess, pretty funny title for a book. In any case, by the time you see this video, probably the book is complete, ready to be uh, published out in November, I believe, November of 2023. I'm sure a lot of the questions we have concerning your life will be in that book. I've never written a memoir, so I don't know how difficult it is to write one of those. I can imagine it would be quite difficult and extensive since you're trying to put a lot of things from your personal life in there. And, you know, us as Rush fans, as Giddy fans, we always want to know everything you guys are up to. We're always interested in what you guys are doing, that your health is okay, you and your family. We're, we're all interested in that for some reason. We, you know, we personally have not met. I hope to change that. I'll talk about that in a minute. And since we've never met, I can't say that I really know you on a personal level. Um, on a general level, I think you're a pretty cool guy. So it would be worth getting to know you even more on a personal level if that ever happens. But if it doesn't, I'm okay with that as well. Um, you have your life, um, you've accomplished a lot in your life, and it's amazing that you still have so many more things to say, and there's a bunch of us that are interested in that. So uh, I will have my book, and hopefully if you do a tour, uh, a book signing tour or whatever, I hope to not miss this one, which I miss your previous book's uh, tour, the big beautiful book of bass, but um, hopefully I'll, re I'll remedy, remedy that if you come around for this tour. But anyway, your book is written, right? So there are things that I'm curious to know that I hope are answered in the book. And if they're not answered, I'm going to ask a few questions that I have that I'm hoping that are in the book, besides all the other things that are in there. And if these questions are not answered, maybe you, we'll do an interview together and you can answer them. <laughs> I'm gonna ask the folks that look at this video to maybe post some other questions that they may want answered about you, about your life, and you know, if the book comes out and some of these questions are not answered, maybe we can address them. Maybe you and I can have a little chat and uh, get those taken care of because us Fresh fans, like I mentioned, we want to know everything about you guys and we'll take in everything you're willing to talk about. So anyway, these are some of the questions that I'm interested in reading in the book, hopefully if it's there. And here's my first question. I'm really interested in knowing what your life was for your first year after your father passed away. Um, in Beyond the Lighted Stage, I think it was, there was a quick mention about your mother mentioning that you came out of it okay, and that was good. Um, but what was that like during that year? What kind of things did you do? Uh, did you listen to music? Did you do all the typical things that boys of your age do at that time? Or was a lot of your time spent related to the death of your father? and was that a grueling thing for you to go through for a year, uh, a year and a little bit? And um, yeah, that, that's something that I'm interested in knowing, how maybe that changed your life perspective, even that at, at a young age um, at that point. So yeah, what was that like during that first year? I think another thing that a lot of people might like to know and something I would like to know is in your whole career with Rush, what was the biggest disagreement musically that you had with Alex? I'm sure there were some maybe fights that you guys had along the way as far as musical direction or maybe even a particular song, how it should be written. Um, what was the biggest disagreement musically that you had with Alex? And maybe possibly with Neil, maybe what your big, biggest disagreement was with him lyrically. What songs do you remember that he came with a whole song and you like didn't like, you're like, I'm not gonna sing any of that or if there were some disagreements there, or if, if it's pretty much like you've mentioned that Neil was very, very happy to just change anything you wanted to change, uh, which is the, the, the vibe that we get. But I'm curious to know if there was any songs in particular that you remember that you were like, there's no way I'm singing any of that. It would be curious to know if, if it got to a point where it was a little contentious regarding any of the lyrics that he wrote, and musically as well with Alex, what was the biggest disagreement there? So another question I have that I'm curious about is, um, 
how much your wife at the beginning was into the music of Rush. Was she into it at all? Was she a fan? Uh, did she become a fan of, of your music over the years? And perhaps of all of the wives of the band members, which one maybe was the biggest fan and maybe which one was the least fan of the music? That's something that I'm curious about because if you like the music, that's great, but if you're not into the music that much, well, you have a husband that's spending all his time writing music that you don't like. <laughs> so um, I'm wondering if that was a challenge for any of the wives of the members of the band or if everything was pretty cool and they were like totally supportive whether they liked it or not, they let you guys be you. And I think that's the impression we have that they pretty much let you guys do what you wanted to do and whether they liked it or not. But I'm curious to know on a personal level if any of them were really fans of the band or maybe not so much fans of the band. Another thing I'm curious about that hopefully you touch on in your memoir, and if not, we'll have to talk about it later, is besides the break after Test for Echo, which everybody knows obviously why it took so long, but if there was another break you guys took after you did a record and a tour that you guys were like questioning if you should come back, maybe you had had enough, or maybe you guys were feeling like, man, do we really do we really want to do this again? I have a feeling that the obvious answer to that maybe would be the R40 tour where maybe Neil was the most reluctant to do that again. But if there was any other time before that, that you guys were like, man, I don't know if we want to do this, but you guys got the gumption to do it again. And obviously whatever tour that was, we get the benefit of it because we got some great music and great tours from that. But what break after what record were you guys more reluctant to come back from besides test for echo and this question i think it might be i think more fans were agreeable that this was the case but was r40 really your guys last stand when you guys got off that stage uh in august of 2015 for the last time was were you guys of the mindset that you would never do that again or was it always the sense of we hope to see you again sometime and there might be something because we, we feel that every time a tour ended, I always felt that you guys were not going to come back, <laughs> especially the later tours. Uh, but when you always ended your show saying, we hope to see you again sometime, that always gave me and that always gave fans hope that you guys would come back with another record and another tour. But after R40, did you guys think, were you guys thinking really differently about that? Was that the time when you guys were like, yeah this is probably the last, or you didn't know. This one's a kind of maybe a more personal level. And you know, if you wanna answer it, or if you answer it in the book, great, in the memoir. But if not, hopefully we can talk about it. Do you find it difficult today to watch or hear things with Neil in them? Um, do you find it hard to listen to Rush songs, if you ever do listen to Rush songs, maybe maybe you don't, maybe you're, you're past that. Um, or do you find that when you do hear uh, music or you see something related to Neil, maybe it makes you happy, it reminds you of happier times. So that's cute, because in, in my case, it's a, it's a mixed bag. There are some songs like The Garden where I, I rarely ever hear that song, because it kind of makes me sad, even though it's a great bookend to to the to the band's career and I actually think that's your best song by the way I think it's the best song that was in you that you were searching for and it finally came out in the garden or you find that hearing things like that you're okay with and maybe it just brings you good memories that's something that I'm curious to know the way those things affect people one way or another especially you guys that you were so close from our perspective, we're just fans way on this end, seeing from afar. Uh, we imagine how you guys would feel. Uh, we know how we would feel based on how your music and the way you guys are affects, uh, has affected us. So curious to know how you feel about that, if it's touched on in your memoir. And I have one more question that, and there's a bunch of questions probably but I have one more that hopefully you touch on in the memoir and if and if not and it's more I guess band more band related I mean the memoir is more you personal related but you were in the band rush so I'm gonna ask uh, was there a record that after you guys completed it you guys were like really doubtful 
that it was going to have a good reception. Now, we are aware of when you guys wrote Caress of Steel, you were very happy when you created it, and then it went downhill from there. And then when you wrote 2112, you're like, we're just going to do it and we don't care how they react. So those were pretty stark contrasts on a record back to back. But were there any other records that after you wrote them, after you finished them, you were like, hmm, I'm not sure if this is going to be such a taken very well by the fans. Curious to know if you guys ever felt that. Or maybe you felt it every time because you guys were always doing what you wanted to do and you hoped we liked it. Uh, fortunately, many of us still liked it. Maybe there was a record that you thought was not going to do that good or maybe you guys felt like that every time. Don't know. Anyway, Getty, that's, those are the things that I'm curious to know if they will be in your memoir. If not, then let's you and I get together and do a little interview way after the book is, is out and you've done your tour and maybe we can do a little chat. You know, I live in uh, the western suburbs of Atlanta and if you're in the area, maybe we can get together or we can do it remotely. That's my invitation to you. Have your people contact my people and any fans watching this video from this point on until when the book is released, if you have any questions that you'd like, that you would like to have Getty Lee have answered in his memoir that you're curious about, go ahead and put them in the comments and you know we'll have hopefully Getty answer those as well. I'm not putting any pressure on you Getty, this is just my personal video letter from me to you because I'm curious about certain things and I thought I'd just ask him out in the open, hopefully you see it and maybe we can chat about it. Talk to you soon, Getty.